Alrighty folks, we are back. Now, we're going to do an intro to factoring quadratics. And what we're going to do here is learn how to complete the magic snowflake. Just a silly name that uh, I came up with. Change the names over, over the years that I've taught. But regardless, what, what it ends up being is we need to practice multiplying and adding quickly with integers and figuring out how that works. So let me just show you what I mean by the magic snowflake. So if I draw something that looks like this, an X with a line down in the middle, a little bit big, big enough for me to write a couple numbers here. There's a 14 there and there's a 9 there, okay? So here's the idea. We ignore these spaces right now. We'll fill those in later in the next lesson. But for now, we're going to put two numbers here. And the idea is we have to think in our head what times what is 14 that when we add the two numbers, add to 9. So you think in your head, what times what is 14? And of course, this is a nice easy one. What times what is 14? 2 times 7. And what's 2 plus 7? 9. So that's it. Now notice, since this is multiplication and, do, and uh, addition, it doesn't matter the order. You could put the 7 here and the 2 here, and that would also be correct. Okay, so 2 times 7 is 14. 2 plus 7 is 9. You see how that works? So I don't, oh, now sometimes it's not quite so obvious because there's more than one option. If it looks like this, what times what is 20 that adds to 12? You may at first think, what times what is 20? Well, that's 4 times 5. But 4 plus 5 is not 12, so that is not the answer. Okay? So you have to think, what else? What times what is 20 that adds to 12? So in this case, as you probably have already figured out, 10 times 2 is 20, 10 plus 2 is 12. Okay, so I'm going to give you two quick practice ones that are like this. So on the top here is 22, on the bottom is 13, the top here is 36, and on the bottom again is 13. Go ahead and pause the recording and fill in the two numbers for each one of these magic snowflakes. Pause it now. Okay, so you should have gotten 2 times 11 is 22. 2 plus 11 is 13. Again, the order doesn't matter. You could have 11 here and 2 here. And for here, 9 times 4 is 36. 9 plus 4 is 13. No big deal, right? So we'll just now it's just a matter of making it a little bit more complicated and practicing a bit. So, of course, as you know, sometimes negatives exist. We have negative 12 on the top and 1 on the bottom. What times what is negative 12 that adds to 1? See if you can think in your head right now. What times what is negative 12 that adds to 1? Did you get 4 times negative 3? Right? Because 4 plus negative 3 is positive 1. Right? Notice that that is different. If we had a negative down here, this would be a negative 4. And this would be a positive 3. Note the difference between this just because of these bottom numbers here. And note that the difference between that and positive 12 and negative 7. It's going to be a negative 4 and a negative 3. Notice that the pattern here. If you have two numbers and one's a negative, it multiplies to a negative. If the bigger absolute value is positive, it adds to a positive. Notice the bigger absolute value is negative, so it adds to a negative. If it adds to a po if it multiplies to a positive but adds to a negative, they both are negative, right? So why don't you try a few like this? Go ahead and pause the recording. This is a fifteen. Pause the recording and uh, fill in these two magic snowflakes. Pause it now. All right, I hope that you got these numbers. Check your work. Now we're just going to do a few bit more complicated ones because things, of course, get more complicated. And I want to show you a technique on how to attack a more complicated problem. Okay. So we have negative 56 on the top, negative 10 on the bottom. Now you look at negative 56. First of all, you look at the sign. It's negative, so you know one's negative, one's positive. It adds to a negative, so you know this one is going to be bigger. The absolute value is going to be bigger. 
So you think negative 56, you're thinking 8 and 7, but that's not going to work here, right? 8 times 7, but 8 plus 7 doesn't work to add to negative 10. Of course, it'd be negative 8 because the bigger one is negative. So what you can do is you can fiddle with these numbers. Think of it like this. If I multiply this times 2, no, that's not going to work. See, already I'm messing up here because then I have to divide by 2, and I don't want to do that. So, let me backtrack a little bit. If we divide this by 2, and we multiply this by 2, we're going to get 4 times 14. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 7 times 2 is 14. 4 times 14 is the same as 8 times 7 which is 56. Notice that their difference, meaning minus, is 10. So this is going to work out for us. This is negative 14 and positive 4. See how I did that? You're going to get to try one right now. Okay. So on the top of yours is positive 90. On the bottom of yours is negative 21. Go ahead and pause the recording and see if you can fill this in. Okay, for this one I want to show you the thought process. So you look at 90, you look at negative 21, you know that since it multiplies to a positive, adds to a negative, they're both negative. Then you say 90, well that's 9 times 10. But that's not going to work to get to 21, to add up to get to 21, right? So, let's see. We could divide by 3 and times by 3, so that's going to be 3 times 30, which is the same as 9 times 10, but no, that's, the difference is too much. Actually, it's not difference. If you add them up, actually, it's too much, so that's not going to work. Let's, let's try something else. 9 times 10. How about if we divide by 2 and multiply by 2? So this is 18 times 5. Is that going to do it? No, no, because it's 21. Hmm, 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 hmm. My problem, a mistake? Perhaps my problem is a mistake. Well, let's see. Let's not, let's not give up yet. Let's see if, if we can figure this out. Let's go back to this. 3 times 30. Okay? If we did 3 times 30, we could multiply 3 times 2, and we could divide 30 by 2. So then we'd have 6 and 15. 6 times 15 is the same as 9 times 10, so that's 90. And they add up to 21, so there you go. So it's negative 6 and negative 15. So sometimes you have to go through a few of these fiddling with it to get your two answers. Alrighty. I'm going to give you two more practice. They're pretty tough. Let's see if you can tackle these. Negative 144 and 10. Over here, negative 108. 12. Go ahead and pause and see if you can finish these two. And here are the answers. Notice the work here. I had to do a couple steps to get to 8 times 18 is 144. Here I did one quick divide by 2 times by 2 to get 6 times 18 is 108. So sometimes you got to fiddle with the numbers to figure it out. Alrighty, hope you learned a thing or two, and we'll see you next time. Toodles!